Hello, everybody. Welcome back to College Cod. It is time for our next matchup. It's going to be a massive one. We're in the losers' finals. It's going to be Humber up against Concord Maroon. We got all of the top seeds left in towards the tournament one, two, and three. And now we're going to see how it all unravels for us to see who's going to go up against Texas A and M Maroon. But my name is Visions. Join with me, proper, proper. We are extremely hyped. We've been waiting to jump back on towards the. Cast and start diving in towards this matchup. I'm so excited for this match, Austin. I mean, you couldn't have written it any better, right? You got the number two seed waiting in the grand finals of Texas and Maroon, while number one and three will be duking it out. Both of these teams, by the way, lost to Texas a and Maroon, which is why they find themselves here in the Losers' Finals. So, you know, both of them are hungry to put themselves back in towards that grand final spot to where they won't have to just win one best of five, but two. Two best of fives, definitely going to be a tall task, but we know that both of these teams have been frying it up so far without uh, within this last week of the CCL. We'll see if they can, can now continue that heading in towards this matchup and who's going to get the best of them. But first, we'll take a look at the stats. If you're not aware of these teams, we'll take a look at exactly what they've been able to do through just the regular season. And uh, first, of course, we're going to give you just the rundown on the actual team names themselves. Concord Room, they were just on stream. They came off a real hot win. Their subs were completely on fire, and Humber's going to have to match that but those subs megatron being one of them paralysis also another one red chase being the assault rifle player that we have crooked and trauma other side we got tunes kush point stevie figure and crozier this is a lineup and a half for both of these squads here and well we're gonna get another clash to see exactly who's going to be able to stand out in this losers final and you're basically looking at like two Greek God Titans facing off against each other here in this matchup. This is going to be absolutely uh, fantastic. This is going to be such high level uh, collegiate COD, even all just high level Call of Duty all together too, because you're dealing with uh, high octane subs. You already listed out for Concord too, but I mean, when you're looking at Toons and Kush Point, I mean, there are no slouches to join with Crozier uh, on that sub line that can absolutely bring it to the hurt that Concord Maroon are looking to set on. But I think that if you're looking for the difference maker in any of these maps, in any of these game modes that we're playing here today, you're definitely looking at that main AR lifestyle, Red Chase versus Stevie and figure on that flex too. Oh man, this is going to get absolutely heated in this uh, loser's finals. It's going to get heated and... I want to see if Humber Esports is going to be able to kind of come out uh, hot in this very first map because obviously Concord and Rune, they're warm, they're feeling good. They got some momentum now flowing uh, within themselves coming off of that uh, big win up against GSU in 3-1 fashion where it came down to the wire in a lot of those respawns. And in a lot of those respawns, I already touched on it, but the submachine guns, that has to be matched. You highlighted Tunes and Kush Point for being some of those players that are able to do that. But I want to make sure that Crozier is also able to kind of stick with this team because we saw yesterday that he was just a little bit of a level behind and we need to see him on form because you cannot have four to the five players uh, simply bringing their A game. You need all five players up against this Concord Maroon squad. They have won multiple tournaments so far uh, within this game, within the CCL itself and uh, you obviously have to be able to match that pressure. You have to be able to match that experience and well that's all going to come down uh, with time and within this match but proper. I was thinking about some predictions. We were talking about beforehand. He's like man where is this match going to go? You know it's like is it going to go to Humber? Is it going to go to Con Concord Maroon. We didn't even be able to come up with any kind of a prediction because at this point in time, it's chalked. It's out the window. Our brackets are completely screwed at this point anyway. So, I mean, <laughs> uh, it, it's, there's no point in even trying to break things down in predictions. But this is going to be interesting because Humber got to watch this last match. I mean, I'm going to assume that while they were playing and maybe shooting some bots, they were watching that last match. They might have gotten to take a look at what Concord Maroon was doing, especially in these search and destroys where things have also come down to a lot of round 11s for them. But this is going to take uh, quite a bit to be able to take down this squad who's coming in hot they're coming in fast and you're gonna have to be able to match that yeah you're gonna have to match just the pace and the tempo that you even saw paralysis ending that uh that very interesting uh ramaza hard point on too you and i were talking about that they went 10 straight paralysis did but also finding a ton of influential kills that also allowed the rest of the members for concord maroon to find these rotations to, with relative ease and it's all on the back end of your subs so again Kush Point, Toons, Crozier, they're going to have to be able to match that pace that Trauma, Megatron, and Paralysis have been able to set the pace against GSU. Though, again, dealing with a little bit of a stronger team here, per se, against Humber is Concord. The first map you can see below our beautiful faces is going to be Gunrunner on Hardpoint to where nothing short of it. SMG Pressure is going to be the name of this map. You're going to be looking for those rotations in Blitzkrieg fashion. Who's going to be able to hold on to the P2 spawns? Who's going to be getting the... Uh, 
de- uh, the deck and a half amount of hill time on P2 and five. You're going to be looking for your subs to be shutting down those entry eliminations and for your ARs to shut down the OE hits too, though on for these two teams, when you're looking at it, for Humber, that when they faced uh, Penn State White, they actually lost this 197 to 250. Though for Concord Maroon, their only loss was in that Map 5 series set where they lost against Texas A&M Maroon 250 to 169. Well, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. It's losers final. Whoever loses this match, well, they are gone. They're out of the tournament. And right off the start, right off the bat, a lot of kills going down. But it's Concord Maroon that are going to be able to touch the hill first and stack a couple of points on the board but on the other flip side it's going to be humber esports that have the favorite side of the map leading in towards our second hill now they'll try and actually hold on towards this side as well put some pressure on towards the hill itself as concord maroon doing a great job frying everybody keeping everyone off of it but finally some yellow coming through as cush point finds a double but the subs they're already heating up for this squad you can see four and one for trauma three and one for paralysis we found a lot of big plays and this is exactly what we had touched on heading in towards this match that humber is gonna have to try and match. Speaking of big plays too, Crook is also on the flank. They're actually gonna get shut down. So that was a big opportunity right there for figure that's able to shut them down. This is a good opportunity now as Concord are looking to find their influential kills to push over towards the P2 side of the map. Humber Esports are going to be able to meet them. No, it is a decent amount of time. 30 seconds as we swap over towards P2 that Humber are looking to make this their money hill. Figure puts themselves in a really good opportunity here to be able to find paralysis. Brooke is going to be able to find CD. Red Chase is going to finally take figure down. But the numbers are not here for Concord Maroon to be able to break this soon. Crook is going to move in with his teammates to the right. Shots go back and forth. It's a little bit of red that pops in. Crook now finds a couple. He's four straight. Looks for five. He finds a snap on the Stevie. But the shots are not good for the kill. Concord Maroon, they soak up a good amount of time off that first hill. Grabbing, grabbing 30 seconds. But Red Chase, he will find three with the AR despite it being close quarters. Humber now just going to chalk this one up. They're not going to look at hitting this anymore. But these Concord Maroon players are actually hot on the tail. Look at this as more kills are even going through. Humber's forced to challenge out. But Paralysis is now found another one he's already getting back into form just like he was in that last series but figure he gets the great timing he finds two kills on this rotation so they should lock down the initial hill time this is really big now for humber too winning the tail end of that gunfight it means that they can influence the p5 spawns and they get that with kush point spawning in the warehouse building however crook able to find a kill with a stun nade nevertheless it's still an elimination for concord maroon as they look to set themselves up with numbers it's going to be a pretty good split push coming through as they get a kill mid map but sporaus is taking down tunes now they have to somehow work their pinch to over towards the coal mines but cv's right there to be able to find two crozier for the third and the team kill comes through from red chase onto megatron so maybe stuffing things a little bit uh, sooner rather than later for humber but take a look at concord when they were able to find those kills they actually flip the spawns for p5 they can start funneling in up the staircase and they find a late break they're going to be be able to hold on to the lead and they're gonna get the scrap time here on p3 yeah this is some good scrap time 20 seconds to try and bank for yourself might put you just at that triple digit mark very early on in towards our three our p3 oh. hill with the shots go through red chase how do you grab that one four straight can you go for five bigger dare challenges but his teammates there so this will be the remaining scrap time humber is unable to push this out to try and play for the spawns leading in towards the hill after because you always want to think ahead so they're going to be forced to try and attack this great hill head on as they do find some kills off the bat that will be a lot of members down for Concord Maroon, so they might have to just wait a quick moment, regather their thoughts and their breath before they hit this next time on this next rotation. But so far, so good. Cush points, DB tunes, all going to be able to start to get themselves on a bit of a spree for themselves. Figure also finding one. Cush point could go for a big push through. He finds the kills into the back. The flip is now going to come in. Humber has played this perfectly. This might bring us towards a tie game as there's still 25 seconds left on towards the hill. But more importantly, Humber now have the spawn set up for the money hill coming four for p5 yeah if they don't draw it up here then they're definitely going to tie things up there on p5 scrap time thanks to crook is going to go over towards concord maroon on the cargo containers one good hit's going to come through from stevie but crook is going to be right there to rip them apart now for humber because you were able to cut past mid map and find an influential amount of kills you will have those spawns like austin was saying for p5 this is a money a big money hill for humber esports where they can soak up 40 plus you're looking for at least 40 if not 50 here for humber but these kills are pretty good almost concord maroon if they were able to keep their lives there for a little while longer and try and tie those into a little bit more kills going forward in p5 they would have been looking for an early break but they do have numbers here brook is trying to break in through the door they won't be able to win the gunfight versus kush point figures will take down their own teammate but the wipe is still there for humber esports 
play so far. First 30 seconds are going to be good. Humber Esports starting to get their feet underneath themselves as they're lighting up the kill feed. And well, this might just be the remaining time going over. One last hit will come through for the side of Concord Maroon as Brooks is able to grab himself a big two. Outside of the hill will be for Alasis, who's going to help his teammates. We'll find another one adds towards his two spree. Now 16 kills towards his name tied with Crook. Both some machine gun players have been keeping up the pressure, but not enough to soak up the majority of the time. So as we go through the resets, all of our hard points to go back in towards P1. Humber Esports going to have a small cushion of just about 15 points or so, but this will be a great start. Now there's a Look, he already flipped the spawns out. As you can see, player number four proper. That will be Figure. He will get cut down, but that was a big play from him to almost try and flip things out. Humber now looking to throw their bodies on the hill. They will throw their bodies on the hill. They're going to try to soak up as much hill time as possible here on P1 as they were able to get the lead in Eclipse past the 130-point margin too. Concord Maroon can't let them get as much time as they were hoping for for Humber on that hill. And Concord Maroon are doing a good job at least finding trades. Always trading off at least one, if not two, on the hill to keep it contested. Concord Maroon, on the other hand, they are dual they are dual pressuring themselves now. They have to hold on to the spawns for P2 while keeping Humber Esports off of the P1 hill. They're unable to do both. They're unable to keep Humber off of the P1 spawns, but Figure is working their way around the train cars, and they're looking to break themselves in towards the P2 area. We're still on 10 seconds left for P1. This is a really big opportunity for Humber. They're still finding kills for Crook. It's going to be right there to shut it down ever so slightly. Two just found three, and Trauma <laughs> says, you're not finding four, baby. He's gonna let some shots go down. Oh my God, Trauma throws the stun out too. I think that was some direct impact also added towards the damage. And this man is gonna be on a, just a two spree, only 15 and 15, but he's got a big play to make in front of him as there's gonna be a lot of Humber players flooding right past him. Unfortunately, that will be a teammate that comes through for Crook, but it does not matter. Megatron, the man that we have not been talking a whole lot about so far, having a slow start, but picking oh it my up God. now! God. Megatron will drop down four as he says, this is my P2 hill and we want to retake the lead. Megatron is going absolutely huge. Will be shut down there, but again, the slow start is starting to come to life now for Megatron. Concord Marin are doing a great job on all other ends. Paralysis is at 20 and 17. Crooked's at 22 and 18. And Red Chase at 13 and 18 as a main AR, finding themselves a lot of value. Though on the other side for Humber Esports, you're definitely looking for Cush Point to probably come a little bit more to life. 19 and 18 is a good start, yes, but you're going to need a little bit more because the pace that Concord Maroon are starting to set is absolutely blitzkrieg. They're going to give up that last second of scrap time. They are holding on to the lead ever so slightly, but Humber Esports, they found their early rotation of P3 and they found some kills, but they're going to be looking at a solid 20 seconds for free here. Back at P3, last time Humber held the majority of this time off the back play of a two-piece for Figure, who solidified the close spawns in the back. Trauma is not going to have a chance at even running out as he's cut down immediately. CV gives up the angle just at the wrong time, but he challenges right back out at the right time, only grabs himself one kill. The rest of Concord Maroon now rallying together for their next pushes. That will be good for two, now three kills. Gush Point tries to respond, but there is not enough members remaining on Humber to try and flood out that first initial push. Megatron will soak up the time. He will get completely destroyed there for bigger on the side. So we'll not be able to grab this time at least as we'll see now the rotation start to be the next factor. Humber Esports, they're going to break past 200 points as someone might look to break out on the remaining of this scrap time. But instead, the call will be made to put all of your resources in towards the next. But Concord Maroon, they are spread. They are fans out at the moment here, Andy. And they're looking to slay all the members from Humber that are moving into the hill. What a snap by Trauma on a Crozier. Won't be able to find the second on the CV who plays on the oil turbine, though. This was all set up because Red Chase pushed past the oil turbine and found a good bunch of kills and a good bunch of map pressure against Humber Esports as they look to push past this green alleyway and try to influence their lives here on the cargo containers. Crooked and Paralysis come back into the mix. They find three. Cush Point trades one out, but Concord, they take the lead back. They eclipse past the 200-point margin first, and now Concord Maroon are looking to soak up as much hill time as possible here. They can't win it out here, but now they're looking to find these kills as influential as they are to cut past the ADOM flag area and try to find themselves on the uh, P5 spawn area, and because Paralysis it was able to find that kill on the Crozier, this is all the more doable, but you can take a look at the colors of the arrows for Humber Esports. They are flooded in and around the warehouse like a bunch of cockroaches, and you know Concord Maroon, they want to try to get them out. 
This rotation could make or break the game. Cod Corner Maroon, they need 25 points to close out the map. Humber Esports, they're going to need to Ooh. grab themselves a good 45. And while both teams could win off of this hill, but Megatron is busted right through the door. Oh my and god! He's not stopping. He will find a big two piece. The reinforcements is in. And Humber Esports, they are spawning out. Cod Corner Maroon, they can put the final nail in the coffin right here after a few more kills go through. Paralysis <laughs> will find two. Paralysis will find three. That is all red. That is five down and Humber Esports, they will not be able to hold on to a setup in P5 and Concord Maroon, strike first. Are you kidding me? Concord Maroon, Concord Esports has shown up to play here in the loser's bracket. They go absolutely massive. Megatron with the slow start only ends at 22 and 28, but that was a lot better than where they were probably thinking they were going to end up at that slow start. They found four over by P2. Trauma was right there to clean things up to 27 and 20 is where Trauma ends up. Court goes massive for their team at 31 and 25 and paralysis at the end. You called so wonderfully, Austin. At 30 and 24, they put the final nail in the coffin. That was close. It was a little bit too close, you would think. But Humber Esports, they start falling apart at the seams. Their SMGs just couldn't keep up with the pressure that Paralysis, Megatron, and Trauma were putting onto them. And just Kush Point was just nowhere to be found. Toons was trying everything they possibly could have. Crozier couldn't be able to meet that pace either. Concord Maroon, they are just so fast, and they are playing with a certain amount of a gusto here in the Losers' Finals. They want the run back, but we got to send things over to Search and Destroy here, Austin, where you think things might get a little bit out of hand because for Humber, it's not exactly the strongest game mode. That's very true. Based off of what we've seen coming in towards playoffs, Humber Esports definitely struggling within this game mode, but this could be a big chance to turn things around. We've seen Ramaza played a tiny bit, not so much through the CCL playoffs as a whole, especially not on stream, but we'll see exactly what the, the big plan will be. And I feel like for a map like Ramaza, if you're willing to play it, if you're willing to go and throw it in towards the rotation, you have to have some kind of big strategies prepared for offense, because this is a map that is very easily, uh, you know, you can get yourself locked down in towards your back spawn on offense because of how many different angles there were there's not a whole lot of ways out of your spawn you have to either make a very aggressive plays or you have to be willing to use your dead silence at the right and perfect time and take those risky plays when it's necessary to do so it's something that envoy talks a lot about on the huntsman you can't play scared if you play scared well a team like concord maroon they're going to run right over you because they're playing with confidence you said it very well yourself right there proper you know these guys are getting ready they're feeling themselves they come off of a very big play in the end of that hard point where they had to win that rotation where they had to win those gunfights they do that we know they have the ice we know they've won so many tournaments but on the opposite side something we haven't talked about is you know how much how much individual success some of the players at humber have actually had and i've personally had a big chance of casting over some of these guys for the toronto ultra northern rivals tournaments you have all three of these players andy that all decide to play on different teams uh coming in towards toronto ultra northern rivals too and i wanted to save this point all the way to this loser's final series for the simple reason that you have these three players that are willing to team with themselves going in towards some of these big tournaments where there's a lot of money on the right uh, on, on the actual line but you head in towards cco playoffs where they've been putting in practice they've been trying to get prepared as much as possible but you just have to almost assume concord maroon they are just such a solid five-man unit they play together for such a long time and it shows and that map number one showed us exactly that Oh, it shows so much of that, too. And even against their uh, previous match against GSU, so many more lights just brightening up, brightening on up for Concord Maroon. You have to be aware of this if you're Humber Esports, that maybe you wanted to practice a little bit more. That time is now well out the window because now you got to yes, be looking at Ramaza Search and Destroy just as numbers alone. This map, game mode included, is not good for Humber. They lost to Levin on value. The LVC beat them in around 11, and Penn State White did too. So this is definitely going to come down to the wire, in my opinion. Both of those matches, keep in mind, Austin, were round 11s. But on the other hand, for Concord Maroon, they were able to win 6-2 versus Penn State White. Uh, that was literally just last night. So you might just end up thinking again, going back to my previous statement in the pre-show, maybe it was certain gas out of the tank for Penn State White. But again, Concord Maroon coming into playoffs. They were they moved away from just being a respawn team only, and they became monsters at Search and Destroy. Deep understanding of how they have to play out those maps and all of those rounds included. And you saw against GSU, the Eagles caught. They, they did everything they possibly could have. They, although being able to keep it really close and walking away with the map, sure, 
you saw the mid-map adaptations and you saw everything that what Concord Maroon could learn from those individual rounds and what they could be bringing to the table. Humber Esports, they got to be on their toes here as they start off their offense first. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. This will be map number two and Drama strikes first. Grush runs himself a double. Humber okay. Esports, they try and play fast through the middle, but Concord Maroon, they say, no, 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 I don't think so. And Grosher, well, you're being swarmed, <laughs> oh, my friends, and you do not stand us single chance as Concord Maroon they play that very clean with the trades and well they're just going to be able to outgun Humber Esports in the middle of the map. I think when you're just looking at Ramaza as a whole this has slowly just become uh well quite the home here for Concord. We're looking pretty star and stellar on every single game map mode including here on Ramaza and their deep understanding of the map the terrain knowing that Humber would probably want to poke through relatively fast. It's a pretty known strategy that if you win that initial gunfight through the bottom of the cafe, it becomes a relatively open B bomb site. Though Concord Maroon on their offense, Crook finds a very nice set nade. Kush Point's going to be able to get that trade, though, right over top of the half wall. Let's see exactly what Concord Maroon are going to do if they're going to burst out and try and push in towards this B bomb site. Red Chase will be the first entry fragger. Got some teammates behind him. Figures kind of caught sleeping as he's not checking his right. He assumes oh. Cushpoint at it, but Cushpoint is going to get caught on sprint. And Browles isn't going to let him know that he got caught on sprint. As it will be all up to Stevie with the AR alone at the A site. is going to have to try and find Trauma, Red Chase, and Paralysis. If he's going to have a chance at bringing this to a tie game. All with subs versus the AR. Being able to poke out from range, which you know Concord Maroon won't be giving you those sight lines with ease. But he got to offer here, Stevie. That silence to play with, but do you even sponge that resource into this push? Every single angle the best they possibly could, but the player on the bomb site is just gonna go ahead and give themselves a little bit of a jump peek. And Concord Maroon set the pace, they set the standard paralysis with a multitude in that round. Let's everyone know on Humber Esports that Concord Maroon have come to play. And if you're Humber, well, obviously, you do not want to be in this spot, but how are you going to start to climb your way out of it? You're going on towards another offense for the last one. You were just shut down when you made that very fast push in towards the middle of the map. You don't want to play too slow because when you give the opponents too much map control, it's just so easy to just lock and pinch you in towards so many of these different angles that you are forced to hit at some point in time. But they're going to make their play through the middle of the map once again. Tunes will be the one that entries in as he slides across and tries to bait and switch. No one's going to drop in towards this round just yet. But as I say that, Crook has now found first one on the Crozier. Tunes has a chance to actually bust through the doors, but there must have been a sound cue for that. No, there wasn't. No turn that comes here for Crook. So Tunes gets it to the B-bomb house. We'll find a kill. Figure also responds. Now Humber Esports, they're going to have Ooh. a man advantage off the back end of Figure with a two-piece. Red Chase and Trauma. What do you have to play with here? Trauma wasn't laying prone in that open doorway. Start things off. They're going to poke around the gun. Shop is able to find Stevie right before on find the plant trauma for two as tunes tries to get the jump on top of the stairs red chase finds themselves in a very good position and now figure all by their lonesome behind the b bomb site is more than sawed out he's gonna get tagged from the window he tries to go for the challenge red chase challenges from the staircase and batman from the top rope comes trauma gonna be able to put themselves up 3-0 it's a tough round figure get the two piece there and you, you almost just assume at least i certainly was assuming that that would have been a round that swung in the way of humber but they are just isolating themselves a little bit too much at the moment, Andy. Giving away some of these free kills that aren't uh, being traded out when they have man advantages. Not that they've had too many man advantages in this Ramaza search and destroy. But when you do have them, you have to make sure you're at least executing and closing out those rounds. Those are the ones that are going to get away from you and might end up costing you the map. But Humber Esports, they're back on defense. They need to find themselves a round. Concord Maroon, they could look to change things up. They've already found a lot of success. And this is a round that you can look to play risky. And while well, the call will be made to go over towards A. And Stevie's going to be the only one looking to defend it. TV, the standing AR here for Humber Esports is going to be the first one defense. You scout oh this out if you're Humber, but trauma, oh my god, man. Seven and calm up. down! Actually, you know what? Don't calm down. Make yourself <laughs> known here. You're able to put yourself on the board there for two. Crooked playing on the backside over by the barbershop, playing with the AR as well. Is able to find tunes as they're trying to rotate on over. At least Stevie and Figure are able to combine for two more. So the bomb has not been planted because all of those numbers had dwindled on down. Stevie and Figure in a 2v1 versus Paralysis. Paralysis, the 
Silence about to run now. Oh, won't be able to find the kill there on Stevie, who also has Dead Silence Pop. They're going to push themselves back over towards D1. He's going to go down, but figures right there from the top side of Rug Shop for Humber Esports. A much needed round, so that way you don't go 4 0 against Concord here on Ramaza SD. Yeah, very crucial one that ends up being secured. And that was the 3v5 that Humber Esports were actually able to bounce back from. You know, right. to start, Trauma found himself a, a nade with a perfect play Semtex top plat on top of some really nice shots on towards, which I believe might have been tunes down low underneath the plat. So this is uh, a round that got away from Concord Rune, maybe just getting a little bit antsy, throwing their life away, just like Humber Esports has kind of been doing in some of their man advantages. But at least Humber is going to stop the bleeding. They find the very first round, so that will be some relief, a little bit of pressure now off of their shoulders as the offense has not been looking great for them so far. They haven't found success. Tunes is going to make some noise, and he's now also spotted out. So he might have to play a little bit safe, throws his Semtex, and is going to maybe have to call for help, breaks another door as they're just looking and searching for kills. Shots go through. Tunes plays his life and gets out safe and sound. This is a really big moment for Toons to actually keep his life there. Information that there is at least one player playing on the bomb site that was Paralysis. Find first blood on the Toons, so a really, really big kill there as the standing AR is able to combine for two. It's the fifth first blood in a row now for Concord Maroon. Stevie's gonna be right there to at least take down Megatron, but is the work cut out for them? It's going to be a 3v4. Numbers advantage in Concord's favor, at least by one. It's like that they still wanna try to hit this B bomb site. They remember that Paralysis was over there, but they moved themselves inside the gun shop. Stevie finding the elimination on the red chase over by the construction site means that this A-bomb site becomes a little bit more open, but it's the timing there for Trauma. It is at least a fine Crozier and figure as well. It's just down to Stevie yet again. Stevie finds one, has 1v2, but there's the shots. Able to hold the top angle. That's going to be another round on the board for Concord Maroon. Now they're just two away from getting themselves chew up in this loser's final. Humber certainly struggling in this Ramazza search and destroy. They have not been notorious in this game mode throughout the playoffs against some of these top teams. It's showing once again as Concord Maroon. They are practiced. They're looking slick and they're looking swift on just about everything that they're doing between all these bomb sites on defense and on offense. Last time it was a hit towards A that was an initial couple of picks that came through for them, just were not able to execute correctly throughout the rest of the round. This one, on the other hand, will be a push back towards B, the traditional bomb site that we do see on this map. Paralysis is going to throw it his smoke, likely going to be the entry fragger that's now going to follow this up as he will start playing for control. He tries to find the shot, but this is so well done for them as Red Chase, he's right behind his teammate, so the trades are out. Now he's just trying to bob and weave around these Semtex grenades will stay up, but Figure is going to find Megatron, and now Humber Esports, they have a man advantage. Trauma threw some shots over top of that jump wall, over towards the player by Sandbags. That was actually Cush Point, but the play in the middle of the map is still happening. That's going to be Crooked. Able to at least find one. Still a player inside the gun shop. So have Steve playing their life over by P1. Crook is going to be able to take down Figure. That is an open opportunity to retrieve this bomb. And at least get the plant, too. And Trauma, you can take a look at their position on the minimap. They're just waiting for the rotation to come through. That's going to be Cush Point. It's going to have to find a big kill. But Trauma, oh boy, you know that they're not afraid to end up pushing this one, though. You know that Cush Point might end up spotting this out there in the perfect position. And the timing is also there. Cush Point is able to find the last two in the round. Humber Esports make this a two round deficit. And that's the SD superstar. Look at the discipline on this play. Just waits perfectly. Doesn't shoot his gun premature he waits for them to line up and make sure he has both of them with some easy kills in the back clean round that comes here for Kush Boy and also good heads up play playing in the back of the spawn but he's able to read that rotation just in case they do push through so Humber Esports they're able to find their second round at the back end of Kush Point SCD superstar that's been playing with Illy for such a long time will be able to make things two to four but they've struggled on offense Andy we haven't seen them find any success towards the B bomb site. This is actually a four man hit towards B. So if they do actually hit this fast towards A, they will have a chance. But Megatron pops up top mid, and this is going to be a good nade onto two to try and shut him down. That really kind of stuffs things now for the offense, and especially with that elimination onto Cush Point towards the mid map area. It's going to be the bomb down. Paralysis has completed this flank. The timing is here to be able to find figure. This is it. Hairline. Paralysis can just keep their life here. Rotation could come through. The timing is not perfect here for Paralysis. Oh, no, the timing. Please, Paralysis, stop playing with my heart, man. Now, peek back around. What's going to be able to find Stevie? That's a bomb dropped yet again. Paralysis definitely knows that there's going to be a player that's going to be keeping an eye on them mid-map. They get tagged up. They're going to be able to throw them some text. 
The full fadeaway can't get through the door as quickly as they wanted to, but Figure's gonna be able to at least find the trade. 2v2 here for Humber as they look to retrieve the bomb, but they're starting to run out of time. 21 seconds left on the clock. They gotta trade this kill. Crook, does he have the same discipline that Cushpoint has? He oh, doesn't need Crook. it because he wins his gunfight! Goncourt Maroon, 5 to 2. Able to grab a big two piece in the end. Crook lines him up, knocks him down. Clean round from him to be able to read that perfectly. Humber Esports still yet to find any success so far in offense. And again, I mean, we poised it heading into the entire the entire day. Humber search and destroy. Not exactly their strongest game mode. They really needed to win that hard point, Austin. And not winning that hard point really does not send any wind into the sails, but it does everything for Concord Maroon as they look to set up another eight bomb site hit. It's a pretty good split here. You got tunes from up top. They're going to be able to find trauma. That's a big entry elimination right there. Megatron won't be there to be able to find the trade, but at least the work is still cut out for them. It stops the offense ever so slightly, and Stevie has been finding value on top of the eight bomb site too. They're able to take down Paralysis, but Concord Maroon are still dedicating themselves to get this push going. This is such an intense round at the moment. Humber Esports, they've had a couple of rounds where they have man advantages, but they have not been able to always close them out. But up Ooh. top, Kosher finds some shots from T3, the P3. Kushpoint also responds. And now it's going to be just about full control. But Red Chase, he's in a great spot, despite being in a 1v4. Has the bomb at least. We'll find one if he can combine for two right here. There's a chance to win oh it. My. But he can't get away in time before the third comes out and challenges. A good attempt for Red Chase. Able to play that very patiently. And that was a very clutchable 1v4. Humber Esports not going to let that happen on their watch. Again, go back to the narrative. Can you win an offensive round? You really have no choice now if you're Humber. I mean, you're down 5-3. Winning it out on defense is perfectly in the cards here for Concord and Maroon. They look to set themselves up on one last round here on defense to send ourselves to that domination on St. Petro. Can they go up two maps? Or will Humber Esports start pulling themselves back? We have to win four in a row. Not one of previous round included. Set names over the top. Push point with the bombs. Gonna start poking through the cafe. Tunes gets tagged up. It's gonna be Red Chase that is mid-map, giving up the A bomb site entirely. And I think this is gonna be pretty well scouted here for Humber. They recognize that that is Red Chase that is normally dedicating themselves to defending the red the A bomb site. But Megatron's gonna be right there to find Kush Point. That's the bomb carrier. That gets dropped in such a precarious location. Now Humber Esports on the A bomb site. But where's your bomb? Stevie finds one kill, but you said it. So well, the bomb's in the middle of the map. Goncourt Maroon, they might just be sniffing this out. Oh, this down man. Round and now Crozier, the man that has not been performing like he has during the regular season, is going to be caught in a 1v4. He pops his dead silence, and now he's looking to make the play. First player oh. challenges. He wins on the trauma. Shots in the back, but he does not react fast enough. Concord Maroon, close map number two out in 6-3 fashion and go up 2-0 in the series. I mean, how many opportunities in that entire map of SD Ramaza exclusively on offense here for Humber? Let's just push the envelope that much further. Yeah, they were unable to win a single offensive round. That's fine. But at the same point in time, how many times on your offense are you going to lose your bomb mid-map, Humber? Please, for the love of God. Like, you got to be able to hold on to that bomb, at least trying to push towards the site. If you're trying to get yourself an entry elimination, it, it's, it's very point blank. Don't make that entry fragger your bomb carrier. It's a tough call for Humber Esports still you know, to, to make that in the middle of the map. And well, it makes them pay as they're not able to actually uh, move on out and grab the bomb and bring it back in. So something to take note of. Now, this is not the first time Humber Esports have found themselves 0-2 down in the series so far within the playoffs. Last time it was up against Penn State White. We got to cast that one um, and we got to see Penn State White uh, choke the third map. And then slowly but surely, Humber were able to kind of creep right back in towards that series and took it map by map by map. But Concord Maroon are no Penn State White. As much as that squad is full of some very much up-and-coming talent, full of freshmen with some crazy raw talent, this is a very much experienced squad that has spent a lot of time practicing together. They have the discipline. They've also had the capabilities and the clutches that we've seen so far. And well, they're on track to go for a 3-0, but Humber Esports, they've been pretty solid within domination for us. And we are going over towards St. Petrograd, where we've seen teams have some very deep knowledge on this map, Andy, as well as some teams that, uh, you know, maybe don't totally know how to play it. We're at this level where both teams know how to play St. Petrograd domination. 
domination, but it's about who's going to be able to capitalize the most when they're on that good side and whether or not they're able to hold it the entire of that first side. Yeah, and uh, breaking that down that much further too. Both these teams through playoff teams are undefeated here on St. Petro Domination, though Concord and Maroon have played this twice, where uh, you do have uh, uh, Humber Esports only played it once. Though, again, still undefeated on this through playoff teams. That's all fine and dandy, but when you're looking at uh, even breaking down those past two maps that we just played on Hardpoint, Gunrunner, Search and Destroy, Ramaza, uh, these sub, the pressure that Concord and Maroon are willing to put up that's the same thing that you're going to be looking towards on the Domination St. Petrograd. And when you go back to that GSU match uh, versus uh, Concord Maroon that we just got done with in the losers' uh, quarters, or the loser semis, excuse me, yeah, you're going to be dealing with a team that definitely understands what it means in each individual kill across the map. What does that mean for our pressure? Where can we put our guns? Where can we put our players to influence any sort of spawn and any sort of, fl any sort of flag pressure across the map? St. Petrograd is a beast, beast within its own self when you're looking at terrain to be covered uh, for domination. And whether or not Humber is going to have enough in the tank to try and bring this back like they did in that last reverse sweep, it's not an easy task. And, uh, and you know, I, I, I coming back to just kind of my knowledge with some of these players, seeing them play on land, seeing their facial expressions when something bad really happens or after a map loss, um, I'm not worried about that for Toons per se, because I think Toons being the captain of the squad is the one person that's going to be able to kind of rally everyone together, give them that big speech as you listen, guys, like it's time to to really step it up. We got to put everything in towards the, this, this map number three. We have nothing to lose. If we lose this, we're out. The season one champions will not be able to make that two peat happen going in towards uh, the season two. So you have to really dig deep. And I feel like it's going to take a lot more than a motivational speech to, to bring everybody back on towards the same page. But you need to definitely start with that because uh, you can't have obviously everyone coming in, uh, you know, not calling out, being in that mindset of, oh, we're OT down. You know, we're getting slapped. We're not able to contest these te this team at the moment. You got to make sure you don't fall in towards that mindset. You have to make sure you're re gaining resetting not thinking about the last few maps and just going in with a clear head a lot easier said than done but that's simply what just needs to happen and we'll see exactly if humber is going to be able to do that or if concord and maroon are just going to keep hitting them with this transport truck they've been hitting them with the first two maps 100 yeah, the case too and again it comes down to those sub pressures that you're seeing consistency for trauma paralysis and megatron uh respectively and also when you have crook there at the same point in time being able to be that flex player that you're definitely looking for it's something that's missing here for for Humber, and and it's literally just that. I mean, it's it's it feels like that you could break it down into so much more across this entire series on what Humber could be doing better. Uh, but all things considered, it's literally just the pressure uh, and the consistency of said pressure that even when you go back to the hard point gun runner all the way through, even Megatron started off incredibly slow, but then started picking it up and then stayed at that high level of being able to continuously push on the pressure so much further. So when it comes down to these domination on St. Petrograd, which uh, Having a little bit of a host issue there, so we'll go ahead and uh, hop back into that map whenever it is ready. Uh, St. Petrograd starting off on the favorite side of the map. You have to be careful of how long you're able to hold on to that and how fast you push past mid-map because much like the hard point on St. Petrograd, Austin, those rotations from the A flag to the C flag is such a long time and it takes such a long while for you to make that rotation happen that if you cut mid-map too soon and you don't have the players watching over towards the C flag, the spawns may flip even when you don't want them to. Yeah, and when you make mistakes on St. Petrograd, you also tend to get punished extremely hard because positioning on a map like this is just about everything. Not so much for hardpoint, but a lot more for domination because everything pretty much unravels through the middle of the map. If you don't have middle map control, if you don't have your ARs up in those uh, top windows looking over you while your subs are pushing in, trying to be the nuisance, getting in towards uh, top hazmat so that the ARs can't get in towards those positions. You know, that's going to be the little battle that we watch back and forth on. And well, when you go three down, when you go four down, that's when you can get punished extremely hard that's when we see the spawn traps are to be a little bit of a factor or the the overextension that you talk about you have to be worried about um, not flipping things out but also knowing when the right time is to go for that neutralization when you have uh, the correct kills down and making that call to say all right go for the neutralization but don't go for the full three cap that's something we see happen quite a bit um, when teams are on that favorite side because they get a little bit greedy andy you know they want those couple extra points to come through for them but sometimes it's not just worth it get the neutralization and play for your life um, there is times you know when 
when you can go for that three count, especially when you're uh, up against uh, the clock in the remaining of the game. But we'll see exactly how things will pan out. Both these teams have looked very good on this map and this game mode. It's really going to be about who's going to be able to clutch up. Can Humber actually reset themselves, get the mentals back on track, and do what they've been doing through the entire season? They went on a 37-game winning streak that was cut down by Texas A&M Maroon. But they have a chance to start to get that streak rolling once again. And it all starts with this map right here, right now. They call it a swing map. They call it the swing mode for a reason. You got to somehow find uh, any sort of value here, Humber Esports, if you want to get the momentum going and will not get wiped in a 3-0 fashion here in Losers Finals. You know that Humber are able to do the reverse sweep. We saw that versus Penn State White. But do they have it against, uh, against a team that also beat Penn State White in Concord Maroon that are willing to put the pressure that much further on? Humber Esports will be starting off on the C side of the map, so it really comes down to how long can they hold on to it because Megatron Paralysis working mid-map ever so wonderfully. They look to cut in here relatively early to flip the spot. Megatron is going to try and draw some pressure back, but not going to have a whole lot of successes. There was some good positioning there from the side of Humber as they're now going to have to kind of clear everything out. Toon's going to be doing that, but Figure, on the other hand, is going to go for this, but that exact play that we talked about there before the game has now just happened. They went for the full-on secure at A, so this is now going to flip things out. Humber Esports could lose the spawns, but they're fighting very desperately by the C flag at the moment, where Cushpoint and Crozier both going to find a couple of big kills. It's not going to be enough now. It's all up to player zero, which will be Cushpoint. Does find one, does find two. Cushpoint actually just went massive, and look at the spawns we're Right now they're spawning p1 so they're going to be able to flood and actually back up push point on this flag and move right in towards this they're now going to gain recontrol of this favored side off the back end of push points play and now they're going to try and put it in the middle of the map to see if they can get this b flag very big moment like you mentioned for push point now the battle over towards the b flag is commencing where it's going back and forth in the kill feed the humber relatively close to getting that back in their name they are able to do so so a cv hold here for the time being but all of this fighting and nobody's watching the a flag but this could actually be really good for concord because you saw where humber were starting to push past mid map and at least you know that cv is aware of this so they go back they're not necessarily playing the anchor but they're able to at least get crooked off the c flag it's a full-on domination coming through so far for humber esports as they're looking for at least a little bit more point mileage here in the spawns that flipped yet again. Concord Maroon coming in towards the Billiards Alleyway. They're going to have to settle for the eighth flag, but that's a lot of time over towards Humber Esports where Concord Maroon weren't getting a single point. Trauma truly just made a big play as he waited for that player to actually jump on the flag to clear some of the time that was starting to stack up on it. But it will be shut down in the end by Toons who backs up and finds that trade. C and B being held from Humber Esports as they're starting to get themselves a little bit of a lead. They're fighting back and they're not falling flat in this map number three. So they do still have some fight back in them as we'll see those spawns start to come through for P1. So Trauma might just be forced to look for an overextension over towards C, but it's read perfectly as Stevie will just cut him down as soon as he tries to push on out. The fight in the middle of the map though, that's where all the action is starting to take place. We see shots go through for Crooks, finds one kill. The trades have been back and forth. Now Trauma on your screen has an opportunity to try and find Stevie on top of the B flag. Stevie finds good shots but has to reload doesn't have a whole lot in the clip so drama still ends up winning the kill but figures there b in the end still ends up going through and humber esports gonna stay intact with their a or rather c and b hold yeah and you can just see humber when they are holding the two flags they're playing it so wonderfully B. This gives me shades of the Florida Mutineers and how well they looked on uh, St. Petro Domination. Just always cycling a player in on the top side of Restaurant, waiting for players to try to contest it from the A flag area. You have players working mid-map. You have your anchor in and around uh, the C flag area right on the outside of the ambulance or over by the hazmat building, just anchoring out the spawns as best as they possibly can be. But what Concord Maroon are definitely struggling with, it's working this OE hit. They have to also work out that player that is in the top side of the restaurant, but they also are split committed. Then you're sending two players over towards the hazmat building, trying to flip the spawns, trying to work your way over towards the C flag, while you're also sending players over to the B flag. It definitely works out in this instance, as Humber have all of their spawns coming back in and back by the hazmat building. So this is now the moment of opportunity for Concord Maroon, who are definitely trailing down by a solid 31 points. Bigger just found a massive two-piece. Stevie's there to follow the trade so far, favoring the side of Concord based off of Paralysis finding two, but Toons has a chance now to go for a neutralization. He's got a player right on top of him. Toons with a quick snap onto the Dome of Trauma. 
gonna put him to bed early. Grosier's there for another kill onto Megatron. Bigger and CB all winning their one-on-one -on -one engagements with Concord Maroon. They're caught right back in the same spot that they've been in in the majority of this very first side where they almost found a flip, but we're not able to hold uh -oh. it. Now we see the OE coming through. It will not actually pay off for any kind of a neutralization, but this still draws back some of the Concord Maroon members to actually clear out their home play, clear out blue, go in towards the top apartments building where Megatron's not gonna see the player behind him. So that is gonna be all yellow in our feed. Humber Esports, this first side of domination is one hell of a way to come right back in towards map number three and let us know that they still have some fight in them, Andy. They got themselves a good lead heading in towards the second side and Concord Maroon now gonna have to repeat exactly what Humber just did. Yeah, uh, man, this 37 point lead that Concord Maroon are trailing from in this deficit. Humber Esports just do a fantastic job playing the C flag ever so wonderfully. The spawns flip for what? Just maybe at least one gunfight and then it went immediately back over to Humber. The second that they realized that they were spawning P2, they just immediately cut past mid map and they win the gunfight yet again to get those spawns back in their name. But again, just Humber Esports playing from the C flag. They do it so wonderfully. Keeping an anchor over by the market, over the hazmat window, over by the water walk. It's just what you need. Well, you also have players working inside the top side of restaurant, cutting mid map over by lions. And then you also have that pest, which seem to be figure more often than not working their way over towards the A flag just to split the numbers for Concord Maroon. Now Concord Maroon on the C side of the map, they're going to have to execute that same exact mentality and more because they are trailing behind by a certain margin. They have to be able to work two flags and hold on to it for the rest of this half and also work some neutralizations in the in the same mix. A lot of this mapping game mode is about your break off and well, Humber Esports, they have a chance to have a really good one as there is the trade, there is Toons fighting a big two piece in the middle of the map. He should end up going over, but not if Trauma has something to say about it. Top has map building, looks for two. Cushpoint will throw his body on the flank, but Crook is there with a kill. Trauma also finds a player that tries to run away, and now Humber have lost all this middle map pressure, but look at player number seven right now, Andy. Crozier has made a big play to try and slip through, and two members are actually back from Concord to make sure no one is going to uh -oh. be here. And if he plays this correct, if he waits for Humber to find some kills in the middle of the map, he can look to pounce on C. This is actually really big now. Those kills are starting to come through, like you were saying here, Austin. Bros are still back here, by the way. They're just kind of hanging out. Having a little now. couple of feet back here. Yeah, I mean, you got to start pushing forward on the C flag. It, the kills are starting to come through now. Red Chase, Big Tron, able to find for three. What are we doing back I'm here, Bros? He's, he's gardening. What is he doing back here? You got to somehow just push yourself back over to see your team needs help over to this B flag. Crozier, what's going on here, man? Oh, there we go. Well, he's crouch walking, so that's a start. Yep. But we'll see Execute exactly. The James I mean, Bond actually, music. <laughs> that's right. Maybe Benji can light that up for us here. But <laughs> Grozier, we'll see if this uh, long extended play of playing back C pays off. It does force the spawns, but now he's actually probably going to have to win a one-on-one -on -one gunfight. I don't know if he's going to anticipate trauma from coming in from behind. But in the end, Grozier does manage to find this <laughs> flag, and he almost looked the turn. So he does draw one member back. So it's not a complete waste because B looks like it might end up going over unless Red Chase can find this kill, and he does. So it's not totally captured. Stevie has a chance to follow this play up with one kill. Really pop up for two. Big two-piece from Stevie as that will be B secured. Megatron has to run on towards C as there was a potential triple cap there for a quick moment. Megatron playing his life. He's got Ooh. the cover, and that's a big response with a two-piece from Megatron. But Finger will put an end to that spree as he'll run right back over to C. But look at the spawn. Andy, it will be favored side for Humber as they will lock down the C flag. Yeah, the fight for the C flag will finally be put to rest. Humber Esports have successfully flipped the spawn and they're going to be able to get the CB hold here for the time being. Now, Concord Maroon, they have the A flag. That's all great and it's all fine and dandy, but Concord Maroon, look at the point deficit that they're playing from behind. Neutralization on the B is just not going to cut it. Winning the gunfight is Humber yet again, and they're going to get the B flag back in the name of Humber Esports. Holding on to the CB flag is going to be a multitude of nails in the coffin for Concord Maroon here on Domination St. Petro. Humber Esports just have Concord absolutely reeling. Toons works their way over towards the A flag. They throw down the smoke. It blossoms up, and they get the neutralization, and they escape with their life, too. And you can just tell Megatron has no idea where Toons is located at. Being the absolute pest in the side, Trauma has no other option. They have to be able to get this elimination onto Toons before they can even think about helping out their team mid-map. Concord Maroon, again, spawning over by the P1 area, are trying to work their way over towards the C flag, but they lose two members. It's just going to come down to Megatron to make a heroic play over here. 
Ruby throws his body on B. Humber Esports, they're on track to keep the series going. There's only a minute 30 left. Concord Maroon would pretty much have to find a three cap right now. Crozier does win his one-on-one, -on -one, so we will clear out this A flag. Yes, we'll see Concord Maroon have the favorite side, but it does not matter because they're going to have to push all the way through. And well, with the way Humber's been playing, they may not allow them to have any kind of a chance of getting close towards this flag as we see just about trades go even throughout the middle of the map. Figures up and alive as he'll try and scout out this player, but Cush Point will find him and take down the air player here for Concord Maroon. There is not going to be enough time unless they can get towards the A flank here very, very shortly. But again, the subs, they're starting to heat up at the moment. They're going to have to run all the way through while maintaining enough presence around this B flag to make sure they don't lose. And Red Chase does win one big gunfight on towards Tunes. Up close and personal with the submachine gun will take him down. But they have to still run all the way through. And now look at player zero. Push points playing this perfect. He runs towards C. That will solidify everything. There is no chance to come back in toward this one and Humber Esports they will live to see another map had to have been a triple cap with just about a minute left and continuously working on the neutralizations but Concord Maroon just take too long to able to hold on to two flags they're unable to do it for even past two point ticks very unfortunate to see and although Crozier worked his gardening skill up ever so slightly it was still just enough to catch Concord Maroon off guard Humber Esports can you work a second reverse sweep Oh man, Concord Maroon, you gotta be able to wipe the headspace clean because we're staying on St. Petrograd. We'll be moving over to Hardpoint right after this. Well, proper, I popped the question on whether or not Humber Esports were going to be able to kind of rally together. And maybe there was a big motivational speech from Tunes who was able to get everyone back on the same page. Either way, some of those players started to actually heat up. 27 comes through for Cushpoint as he made a lot of big plays, found a lot of big multi-kills when going for some of those neutralizations as well as throwing his body on the B flag. Stevie having a couple big moments throughout the middle of the map with the assault rifle in hand, doing his job to try and shut down his opposing player on the other side with the assault rifle. So big plays that come through for Humber. And now they got that first map. This could just be very likely a repeat on how that Penn State White's uh, series ended up going. Now, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself as we still have to go in towards a hard point towards a Petra. Grad, but getting that first map is just such a relief. You can kind of breathe now. You're not feeling like your back is up against the wall. You have nothing to lose in that map three. You end up taking it. You end up securing it. So that's got to give you just a bit of that motivation that might have been needed heading in towards the rest of the series. Yeah, this is a really big moment now for Humber. Maybe it's just St. Patrick Grad to where they feel absolutely comfortable. Maybe it was that pep talk that came through from Tunes, hyping up the squad, being able to rally them together. And there's so, there's so many more benefactors that you just have here in Humber Esports again. You know that they want the two-peat. You know that they want the run back against Texas A&M Maroon, too. There's a certain amount of fire underneath them. But Concord Maroon, again, they have a lot going against them here. They're trying to work against all the haters, talking mad trash about them all season long, uh, saying that they're 100% just a... Uh, that they're only good when they're on their hosts, only really good when they're inside that room together, but they've been able to showcase all of their talents through the entirety of this tournament. Humber are not out of the woods yet. They literally have to complete the reverse sweep. And let's not forget that even, and, and, and just go with me here for a second. Even <laughs> sure. if Humber win the same Petro hard point, you have to somehow beat Concord Maroon on Arkloff Peak Search and Destroy. Just somehow. You have to become monsters on Search and Destroy. It's not just going to happen overnight, but the only way that you do that is if you smoke Concord Maroon on this hard point. You have to take their mentality, and you have to crumble up like a piece of paper, and you have to throw it across the room, and you have to J that bad boy in the, in the trash can if you want to win out this series, Humber, because going to that search and destroy, although it would be monumental to send this to a map five at this very point in time, you still got to be concerned with the search and destroy. Well, Proper, I know we said no predictions when we were coming in towards the series before the break. But now that I'm looking at this one, I got a bold prediction to make. If if they do take the hard point, if Hummer's able to grab the hard point, I think they will take the search. And all these guys individually you know, are good at search and destroy. Like I have personally seen them perform in, in multiple tournaments, in multiple lands, like all these players individually for the most part, at least between uh, Toons, Figure, and Cush Point, the big three for me that I've seen a lot of uh, within the Toronto scene. And seeing these guys do what they do within search and destroy is usually something that comes very natural to them. But for whatever reason, these five as a team, 
just can't find that same success that they were getting during the regular season against some of these top teams that are just so disciplined that when you make a mistake, it's all about punish. And well, that's what the highest level really offers. You know, if you make those little mistakes that you might've been making in search and destroy against those teams that have been mediocre or middle of the pack, you might get away with it, but not against Concord Maroon, not against Texas A&M Maroon. Both of these teams know how to punish correctly. And that's what we've been seeing throughout this playoff run so far, even seeing that matchup against Humber when they did go up against Texas. So this will be map number four, ladies and gentlemen. We're getting ready to jump in towards this very, very shortly. Humber keeping themselves alive now. Concord Maroon, they might have had a little bit of that pressure that was just on top of Humber now on their shoulders as they'll have to still close things out, hopefully in 3-1 fashion, at least in their minds. They do not want this to likely go to a map five if it doesn't have to. But we're going into the same map, St. Petrograd, where it's all about rotations. And those rotations are going to make the difference on the scoreboard and well that also comes up the back end of your sub machine gun players in your ARs doing what they need to do doing what they've been practicing but it's time to kick it off map number four losers final Humber Esports need to find this map win or they are eliminated Concord Maroon if they do they'll move on towards that grand final Concord Maroon starting off on the favorite side of the map how long can you hold on to these P2 spawns Humber Esports though they're going to be able to find an initial bunch of kills Cush Point will take out their teammate in Crozier 50-50 split going uh, quite even, keep in mind you, as Concord Maroon set themselves on the hill, at least putting themselves up and at least keeping it contested for a certain amount of time. But what's most important here for Concord Maroon is holding on to these P2 spawns. So far, they're going to be able to grab the first 15 points before Concord Maroon might look at hitting this, but they also need to make sure no one slips through. Look at those spawns. Those are blue. Concord Maroon might flip out towards the back, or they might get the deep spawn. So they do get the deep spawn by the pool hall, and this is going to be a couple players that rotate right through the left. Player number three actually just spawned right beside blue, and he might have had a sound cue. That's Megatron, who pops out at the perfect time. A big one-on-one -on -one against Toons right here. Both captains on both teams might engage in a 1v1, but Toons has the chance to slip right by. Shots go through. This is going to be 18-23. to 23. Concord Maroon grabbed the majority of the points off of the very first hill, and now they have the close spawns in this setup to try and lock down more heading in towards the second. Humber Esports spawning in over by the archways, though, so they can start funneling in their numbers too. A big opportunity for Crozier, but they won't be able to win the gunfight as Crook was able to gun them down from behind. Good opportunity here. Pinstripe kill feed is not going to favor you, Humber Esports, as you still have close spawns for Concord Maroon. Split spawns now. This is going to be a good opportunity, but you've got to be wise here if you're Humber Esports. You've got 30 seconds left on this hill. Do you try to go for a late hit? The option in the best likely scenario is that you say no, because it's such a long walk from P2 over to the hazmat building, so Humber Esports will let Concord get the rest of that scrap time as they look to set up for new. Concord Maroon, they're just laying down the pressure. Humber, yet to try and ease the pain so far, but this is a big chance to do it. Cush Point finds two on the rotation. Crook has a good chance to try and break through to hazmat, but he won't be able to do it now. It's up to paralysis, but he's got nobody with him. He's gonna have to wait for his teammates before he actually pushes all the way through as that will be the initial hill time now collected for Humber. They have no one in the middle of the map at the moment. Just player zero is now going to shift on over, which will be Cush Point, but Megatron was a big one-on-one. -on -one. Almost finds a second as he tags up Toons in the hill. Will contest the time as he moves in, but Toons will get some help from his teammate as Crozier will be able to find that kill. Now Trauma, the next one entry in towards our hazmat, building a big one-on-one -on -one for him. Has his teammates to go for some bait and switches as they're trying to flood in, but Humber is doing such a fantastic job of walking down every entry, winning every gunfight and now they have a chance to potentially look for a full 60. Oh man, now we're starting to look at shades from our hardpoint on Gunrunner. Concord Maroon looking for the break. They're able to keep this contested for the time being. Toons won't be able to beat Megatron, but at least gets traded out by Cush Point. So good contested time here. Concord Maroon able to hold on to the lead. They're going to be able to hold on to it ever so slightly as they are also able to find the rotation, dedicating one, if not two members at a time to send out for exit of the frags away from the hazmat building. That's going to be the two players of Paralysis and Megatron. Megatron is going to be able to piece together one along with Paralysis that also found another. So the late push may be over inside the billiards hall, but there are already two players over here. You're looking at Cush Point and you're also looking at Toons. Toons gets absolutely obliterated by Megatron off the spawn. Oh, it's your teammate Paralysis. He almost had a chance to, to find two, but his teammates are there to help him clean up, and the break is going to be good. 
but Humber, they're flooding in through blue. They're going to be able to find a hit to the side, but Megatron will deny them any entry so far as Trauma follows up the back with a kill for himself. Humber will not be able to find a swift rotation in towards our pool hall on P4, but they have a chance to now find themselves a setup in towards the restaurant in P5, the very last kill of our first rotation in Concord Maroon. They're going to break triple digits. They're just going to be at about 118 roughly to 68, so just a hard point up roughly, give or take. Stevie will be locking down the very first entry coming off of that last hill as he finds shots into one but can't finish off that player and now will be taken down for Megatron in the back. That's four down. Humber is just going to drop immediately as this hill populates. This could be a big one and one for Figure as he finds oh, one. He no. finds two. Figure is actually going massive in the hill. He's still up and alive but finally will die there to Paralysis who finds the break and Cod Corner Maroon. They've been so notorious for finding breaks Andy and they do it once again. They do it once again, absolutely the case too, in finding eliminations on the outside over by the bus stop. Red Chase puts themselves in a prime position to be able to shut down Stevie and Crozier, but the gunfight's still happening on top of the hill. Trauma has to re-enter themselves off a of respawn. Contesting the point here is not only good for Concord Maroon, but it's just absolutely not Megatron. the best for Humber. Megatron, please! He is all oh, Megatron for four! 21 and 14 is their start. 10 seconds left, how about 5, 22 and 14? 10 seconds left for the scrap here for Concord Maroon as they look to convincingly win the first set of hills. Megatron doesn't want to see no map 5. He wants to end it right here in this map number 4 in St. Petrograd Hardpoint. But Humber, they're going to have to kick it up a notch to match this pressure. Crozier is going to be, have to be one of those members that has to kick it up a notch. 8 and 14 at the moment. Need a little bit more from one of your submachine guns on this map so that you can apply just a little bit more additional pressure. But Humber Esports, they're not out by any means. They're picking oh. up some good time. A red chase is going to find a beautiful jump shot in towards that second kill on the Crozier. Going to clear out some of that entry leading in towards the spawns for P2. In the mix of it all, we'll see Paralysis Trauma fighting back and forth. And they will be able to lock down and take out the remaining players that were soaking up this time. This also might be the remaining 20 seconds going over towards them. So if Humber is going to concede this and give this up, they need to find time right now. This is just so troublesome too. Humber Esports, yeah, you're able to hold on to the P2 spawns. You're able to get this red from time here on P1. This is all fine and dandy, but look at the deficit that you're still playing from behind. Just sub an entire hill. So you have to meet this OE hit that Concord Maroon are forcing at you over by the hotel lobby. Crozier has to go huge. Like you said, 9 and 15, not exactly the best start here for the sub of Humber Esports. But Megatron is in the mix. It's going to get dealt with. So Humber Esports do deal with the first line of offense that Concord Maroon are starting to throw towards P2. They're going to keep Stevie on here just to soak up as much hill time, while the rest of the players all deal with a multitude of angles across the map. This big blue area it has to be contested, but Kush Point jumps out a little bit too early. Good kills here for Concord Maroon. They're going to be able to break this hill. They've been breaking hills constantly, and they do it again. Every single time it calls for it, every single time they deliver, they break the spawns. Will this be a one-on-one -on -one engagement that goes the way of Humber? Yes, it will be. Gush Point hits the scrap time, has his teammate with him to soak this up. But if anything, I'm sure Concord Maroon is completely okay with what's happening because, yes, they hit the time and they grab 20 seconds. But look at what this does for the map. We can see all of these members down from Humber that have to rotate across the map. But it is Figure, who's actually winning some big engagements at the moment, has no support from any of his teammates. So he still has to make the heroic play. He will be unable to hold out for himself, but he does buy a little bit of time. Those spawns are deep for Concord Maroon. They'll be close. Push point. If he can play his life, if he can find them off a respawn, he'll be in a great spot to start cutting players down and give his teammates a little bit of room to try and find a break. All the timings there for Kush Point. Able to shut down Paralysis Whoa. right off the spot. Kush Point for another on the Megatron. Able to shut this down by themselves, but coming back in. Again, you talked about the spawn. They are right there, right behind the hazmat building for Concord Maroon as they look to enter themselves back into the hill. It is still in control here for Concord Maroon. Meeting Humber Esports at the door. They're going to eclipse past the 200 point margin. And Humber Esports, they are reeling. They have Crozier over by the Billiards Hall trying to influence the spawn over by this next hill. But look at all the time and look at all the space that Concord Maroon are just free to play with. Crook just found a big two-piece. That's going to grab themselves just the extra 10 seconds. And Humber Esports seem to keep up a bit of this pressure in the middle of the map. But if you look at player number four, he actually has a free hit right in towards the pool hall. It is Red Chase, so it's just the AR. Not likely the one that wants to get in the hill. And he's now going to have to battle up against Stevie. But Stevie will have none of that as he grabs two. Cuts down the second one in the middle. Figure gets beat down as he takes some boxing gloves to the face. And that will be it for this life. But Megatron now looks to rally with the rest of the team as he finds two. Looking to combine for more. Kush point 
one in the hill, finds a big flank and finds a big two piece. He will maybe look for a three, but paralysis will be there with the shutdown and the good shot to take him out. Humber Esports, they've been getting broken every single hill. They have not been able to grab a full 60 in quite a while, but this is a hill that you desperately need it. You desperately need all of this time and some more. One good attempt here now for Concord Maroon to try to break this hill, but look at the setup that Humber Esports were setting themselves up here for P4. They had players on top blue. They had the players inside the hill. It is so hard to break such a fortitude of the fence. Megatron goes absolutely massive for two. Just for the 10 seconds of hill, it's only going to put them in about a 20 second margin just to win out the rest of this time and send themselves to grand finals. But Humber Esports with the know-all start setting players over towards P5 to where they look to set themselves up for another Another money hill, but trauma. Crooked and paralysis. They come in, they combine for four. And although figure is trying to keep their life, and CV is able to find at least one. They are unable to keep their feet on the hill. Concord Maroon remain in control. The season one champions. They're facing elimination. They're facing the end of the game. Concord Maroon. They need another five points. Humber. They gotta touch it in the matter of seconds. But it's all red in the feet, and it's all Concord Maroon. Concord flipping Maroon able to come back and get the kill against Humber Esports. They came out of the gates absolutely running 250 to 168 on a same Petro hardpoint versus Humber Esports after they got smoked on that same Petro domination. Concord Maroon, they look at that domination. Maybe they can learn some things as they head towards a two potential best of fives versus Texas and number room, but Humber Esports, they came to play. They tried to put everything they possibly could have in towards this loser finals. It just was not enough. They just could not keep up the consistency. The pressure from the submachine guns in the lineup for Concord Maroon, which is way too much to deal with. I kept on saying it during the losers, uh, loser semis and now losers finals. Something got under the skin of Red Chase to where they were able to pop off. And when you have a main AR fighting so much value, look at all the pressure that the submachine guns are able to uh, just quite literally waltz and find so much good breaks time and time again on a multitude of hills concord maroon just wipe humber esports clean and they are able to get those hills back into their name i can't believe i'm seeing this 250 to 168 scoreline concord maroon well done to you all we'll see you in grand finals we will see them in grand finals proper and you said it so perfectly the sub pressure it translates from that last series that they just played against gsu perfectly up against humber where they find just about every single respawn and well this is just going to be a squad that's coming in towards this next match in the grand finals warmed up up against texas a m maroon a squad that has already beat them three to two and sent them down in towards the losers bracket but they'll get a chance at a rematch to see if they can try and get the best of them in the first series and then have to force the second series to actually be crowned your champions here within season two for the college cod league but Man proper, what a freaking series that we just got. Humber Esports, the season one champs are now gone. We're left with two teams, but there's some takeaways that you can look at there for Humber. If they maybe uh, grab one of the first two maps, things look a little bit better heading in towards the rest of the series. But Concord Maroon, they just carry everything from that last series in towards this one. They're not playing around. They're here to do one thing, and that is make sure that they're upsetting everybody that doubted them, like Megatron said in that interview with me. And uh, everyone that doubted them, including myself, well... Maybe I'm on the hype train now because these squads, the squad's looking great. They're looking great proper. Maybe I hopped on the, the hype train a little bit too late in towards the season. But nonetheless, I think that this squad is going to give Texas A&M Maroon a good run for their money in their second attempt in the rematch. I mean, like you said, this is a five-man roster that has been putting in the work. They have played around with their roles. That's fine. But at the same point in time, they've also just been playing together. You can see their understanding in search. You can see their understanding in hard point. Maybe a little bit of a fumble there on the domination. But at the same point in time, they have also shown a lot of good bright spots along the way that they are not afraid to push the envelope, to take the gunfights, to then put the pressure onto a team of Humber Esports' caliber. They already went to five map versus Texas A&M Maroon. They're going to have to do that, plus win the first series, and then potentially win the second one if we get there, too. Like you said, I think we're in store for it's such a high-octane match for Grand Finals because, I mean, yeah, they have a whole D-Lo and landed on Texas A&M Maroon, but when you're dealing with the sub-pressure coming through from Megatron, Paralysis, and Trauma, 
you are just looking at so much pressure, not to mention Crook at a multitude of times, exclusively on that hard point gun runner where they went absolutely massive for their team, being able to find breaks. Yeah, this team is pretty scary. That's one word you could definitely use. Pretty scary. And, well, we're going to see exactly how all of that unravels. Ladies and gentlemen, this is simply just the start. We have a potential two series coming up for you in this grand finals. We have all of the stacked talent, some of the best players within the College Cod League, and even some of the best players in the top amateur league, as we'll look at D'Lo and Landon as the two big players heading in towards this matchup up against this stacked lineup from Concord Maroon. But you do not not want to miss it you do not want to touch that browser don't go anywhere we'll be right back with your grand finals very shortly